Right, hey guys, it's Jack from Peach, and we're here today to address a bit of an issue that uh, a lot of modern day guitar players are running into, which is specifically going to be kind of how do you take the great tones that you've worked hard to achieve uh, with your guitar and valve amplifiers and pedals, and how do you take that and record it at home, or in fact take it out and gig with it and get a, a great live sound. There's a few different elements that go into this equation, specifically for home recording that we want to address. So typically, you've got your great guitar and valve amplifier. You've also uh, realized that you need a great recording interface to get those tones into your computer or to your mixing desk. You then need a digital audio workstation if you're recording directly onto a computer. And then traditionally, you'd need a microphone to mic up the speaker cabinet. So this is a great way to do things. Obviously, it's been done for decades and decades, but it does run into a few problems. Specifically, you know, if you've got kids at home or a very troublesome neighbor, or maybe you just don't even have the space or the uh, inclination to want to crank up a loud valve amp to get some recorded tones. So in recent years, there's been a couple of different approaches to tackling this problem. You've got the digital route. So digital modeling is here to stay. Uh, some guys love it, some guys hate it. It's got le several different pros and cons. It definitely serves its purpose, but it's not for everybody. So if you do want to still use your valve amplifier at home, there's still a way to do that. And that is typically through load boxes and then using uh, speaker simulation or IRs, impulse responses. So there's several different products on the market to tackle this issue, and we're focusing today on the Sur Reactive Load IR, which basically encompasses all of those different features uh, all in one box and is going to allow you to take that, that great tone from your amplifier, model it with the sound of a speaker cabinet and a particular microphone configuration, and then run that signal straight into either your digital audio workstation to record at home, or to plug straight into the PA and, uh, and go out live for gigs. So uh, we're going to show you how to set the unit up in typical kind of uh, home recording studio scenario and then later on in the video you're going to hear some sound clips so you're going to hear how, just how great the unit sounds and how authentically it reproduces the tone of different speaker cabinet configurations. Okay guys, so I'm just going to give you a bit more of a detailed run through of how you're going to connect uh, the reactive load IR up to your, to your valve amp and then further on how to connect it to your either your interface to record with at home or to your mixing desk for live applications. So we've spun round a Badger 35 head and the reactive load just to give you a bit of a clearer view. The most important connection you've got to be aware of with this unit is this one on the far left which is the input from your valve amp. So we've just taken a standard speaker cable out of your uh, speaker output on the amp, the one you would normally plug into a speaker cabinet, and that's going straight into the input. So this input is rated at 8 ohms and it's got up to 100 watts RMS of, uh, of power that it will accept. So as long as your amplifier is below 100 watts, it'll be compatible with this unit. So as long as that's connected, your amplifier is going to be uh, using the reactive load internally, it's going to be safe. The next jack along is the through speaker jack. So the idea here is you can still use a real speaker cabinet if you want to at the same time. And what happens there is the load from the speaker then replaces the load that's internally in the reactive load. So basically, if you're using a speaker cabinet, you want to match the impedance of your amplifier to the impedance of the cabinet because the load is no longer working in this unit. But you don't have to use a speaker cabinet, that's the whole point of the unit. Then you've got the USB socket which is to connect the uh, reactive load to your computer. So you can choose to load up your own IRs if you want. If you have uh, your own favorites that you've downloaded from the internet, you can use those and put them into the unit. You've then got a 9 volt power supply input which is to, uh, to be able to use the IRs that are on board the unit. You need to have power going to it. And then these are the two sockets that you're going to use to connect it, either, like I said, to your DAW on your computer or to a mixing desk for live use. So you have an unfiltered output, uh, which is basically going to give you the raw sound of your amplifier without any of the speaker filtering. So if you want to hear what an amplifier actually sounds like, you're going to use that socket. And the idea is there that you don't have to use the IRs that are built into the unit, you can then use IRs on your, on your computer that you've already got stored on there. But the most important one, and the one that most people are going to use with this unit, is the IR or the kind of the filtered output. So that is going to give you, uh, at, straight out of the box, so I have loaded in 16 uh, different tones that they've, uh, that they've made up in accordance with Celestian speakers, and you're going to have access to those, and that is what you're going to hear when you connect it to your computer or to your mixing desk. So we're going to spin back around now, show you the front of the unit. Okay, so as you can see, we've flipped the reactive load back around to the front. These are the controls that you need most uh, easy access to, so we're going to run through these controls as well. So starting over here on the left, you've got the, the display that will show you the IRs that you're using internally. So by default, you've got, as I mentioned before, 16 IRs that Sir will give you in the unit, starting with bank one, cab one, and as you scroll through, you have four cabinets per bank, and then we're gonna move up to bank two, same thing there, four cabinets per bank, all the way up, there's four banks of that. So we're gonna detail further on what those IRs are, and you're gonna hear individual sound clips of each of those, but that's just kind of straight out of the box, you're ready to plug and play, so that's great. You've got a little LED clip 
uh, for your signal here so that if your amplifier is putting out too hot a signal for the unit it will show you there that it's digitally clipping and you don't want to get that kind of going into your into your recording setup or, or live it's going to sound horrible so moving over here this is quite an interesting section and this is what i think is going to appeal to a lot of home users you can actually use this unit without having to connect it further onto any other equipment you can just plug in some headphones you have an individual level control for this here and this this control will only work with the filtered signal so when you plug headphones in you're going to hear your valve amplifier with the irs filtering the tone so it's going to sound in your headphones exactly like you you've put a microphone on a, on a real cabinet you've also got an auxiliary in socket here which is uh, going to enable you to connect like a mobile phone or any other mp3 playing device if you want to play along to some tunes in your headphones you can do that and it's going to be completely uncolored and then over here this is kind of the uh, the output level that's going to send out of the back of the unit. So when, you, when you've got your amplifier set up, you've got the gain level correct and everything like that, it's not clipping over here. The DI level is the level of the output that you're sending out. So whether that's going to be to your DAW or to a mixing desk for live work. So that can, that's going to give you the output level there. If you've got a particularly quiet amplifier, you can boost that signal by 6 dB as well. And you can also, if you've got a really kind of high, uh, high frequency bright signal, you've got a, a high cut there as well, which you can toggle on and off. All right, guys, so we're on the other end of things now. I've connected uh, the Reactive Load IR to my computer here, which is a MacBook Pro, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that. So what I've done is taken the signal uh, straight out of the back of the Reactive Load IR using a TRS balanced jack cable, and that's plugged into our recording interface, which in this case is a Universal Audio Apollo Twin. So I'm going to open up console, which is the kind of interface uh, for the computer, so we can see exactly what's going on on the recording interface. And I've set up a channel here on input two for the reactive load. So if I play the guitar, you'll see that the signal is coming in. And that's a nice healthy signal. It's not too strong, so it's not going to uh, do any digital clipping at all. Uh, it's just, you know, you want it to be nicely in the green. So we're at about minus 10 dB there, so that's all good. We've set the unit to line level as well to receive the signal from the reactive load. Okay, so next stage is I'm going to open up our digital audio workstation, which in this case we're going to use GarageBand. Uh, GarageBand is a free app that comes with every MacBook or Apple, Apple computer. So if you're an Apple user, you're going to know this app well. You don't need to pay out any money. You can start recording straight away. So here's a project that I made just slightly earlier on uh, just to speed things along a little bit. We've got a track set up here for the reactive load. Uh, again, using that same input two from the Apollo interface. And you can see that the guitar is coming in. <laughs> straight to the digital audio workstation. So we're, we're pretty much ready to record. All I need to do is hit that button. All right, guys, so that just shows just how easy it is to get the sound of your amplifier straight into um, any kind of recording setup, really. Uh, but like I say, for this case, we're just using GarageBand. It's nice and simple, and you can hear that the tone of the IR is really helping to, to translate the amp tone itself really well into a recording environment. And that will apply as well for live use uh, using a digital mixer or any kind of mixing desk. So what I'm going to do now is just record a little bit showing you the tone of just the pure amp without the IR. So you're going to hear just how drastically the IR is affecting the tone of the amplifier. Okay, so here's the tone of just the uh, Sir Badger 35 amplifier without any IR filtering at all. <laughs> Pretty disgusting. So you can hear just how drastically an IR changes the tone. And this IR that we're using is just bank one, preset one, straight out of the box on the SIR unit. Uh, so you can hear that that is a really useful way of getting your amplifier tone recorded. Nothing else is in the signal chain at all. We're just plugging straight into an interface, straight into a recording a bit of software, and that's the results you're getting. So I'm just gonna play those back to back one more time. Here's the IR tone. <laughs> And here's without the IR. Yeah, that's enough of that. Uh, so you might ask, in fact, why would you ever want to hear or record this tone, uh, you know, the unfiltered amplifier tone? But the benefit of that is if you are using uh, software to record like this, you might have IRs loaded onto your computer already that you might want to use instead. And you might not want to, uh, in the recording stage of the process, commit to a particular IR tone. So what having this part of the signal will enable you to do is uh, decide later on exactly which IR you'd like to use to shape your tone. But for most people, if you just want to plug straight in and record or plug straight in and play a gig live, uh, using the filtered tone, here it is one more time. It 
just enables you to sound great straight out of the box. All right guys, so I've shown you just how easy it is to set up and start using the reactive load IR from Sir. What we're gonna do now is show you the most important bit of all of this, which is how the thing sounds. So I've got it plugged into a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe combo amplifier. So we're gonna start off uh, actually on bank four of the unit. And the reason I've done that is because this is the bank of uh, stock presets of IRs in the unit that are gonna be closest to the speaker setup and cabinet that the hot rod actually would use. So they're modeled on uh, one by 12 Sir cabinets. So I'm gonna run through the four presets in this bank uh, on the clean channel, and I'm gonna to go to the, uh, the gain channel as well a little bit later on. So the first preset you're gonna hear is bank four cab one, and that is a Sir Badger one by 12 cabinet loaded with a V30 speaker. And uh, the impulse is mic'd uh, with a SM57 in a kind of balanced, uh, neutral tonal position. So I'm gonna show you that, and then we're gonna run through the four tones, and you're gonna see on the screen which IR I'm using. Okay, so here's IR number two in the same bank. This is still a uh, Sir Badger 1x12 cab loaded with a V30, but with a slightly different mic placement and uh, configuration. Okay, so moving to IR number three, and this is actually a slightly different cabinet. It's still a 1x12, uh, but this is an open back uh, based on the Sir Bella cabinet. So this is probably going to suit the clean tone of the amplifier a little bit more, I would say. And lastly, here's IR number four. This is still the same Bella uh, 1x12 cabinet, but again with a slightly different microphone configuration. Okay, now I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, but I'm gonna move over to the drive channel of the amplifier. So starting back at uh, IR number one. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to run through the rest of the IRs in this unit now on the different banks. Uh, we're going to feature some different amplifiers and both myself, Joel and John are all going to play. So you're going to get some real different variety in the playing styles and the tones of the different amplifiers.
Right guys, so I hope you've enjoyed the tones you've heard in this video and I hope that you understand how easy it is to use a device like this in your home studio or for live use. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like below. You can comment below and let us know what you think. And if you want to find out any more about any of the products that are featured in this video, you can find it all out at peachguitars.com. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we hope to see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.